guys. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well. I am in the kitchen making my shake, my breakfast shake. So I just wanted to come on here and give a quick word that um, I experienced early this morning. Um, and I just want to talk about like urgency when it comes to praying for other people. And when God drops the urgency, like that urgent prayer in your heart, like don't ignore it. Does it matter who he's telling you to pray for? Like when he puts that urgency in you to pray for somebody, no matter what time of the morning it is, if you don't understand that this person did you wrong, whatever the story is, if he drops an urgency in you, to pray for someone, it could be one, two, three, four in the morning, do it because he's it's for a reason, okay? You're an intercessor, like get up and pray for that person. And what prompted this video, mind you, um, I have the urgency often to pray for people, right? But this time it was a little bit different. Um, I had a dream, and I won't go into detail about the dream. Hold on, guys. But I had a dream. Um, it was a dream about my ex-husband. Um, and again, I won't go into detail about the dream. But after I had the dream, I woke up, and it was around 5 in the morning. Could have been almost five, four something in the morning. So I woke up and I laid there um, because when I have dreams, sometimes Satan will try to get me to forget my dreams. Like he will do his thing and you'll forget what you just dreamed, right? So I just lay there. Sometimes when I wake up, I just go immediately into prayer because I know even if I don't remember the dream right then and there, when I go into prayer, God will give me back that dream if it was from him and if it's something he wants me to meditate on or to write down or so forth. This was one of those dreams where I laid there for a second when I woke up this morning. Again, it was like maybe 4.50 in the morning and um, at this time, and I just laid there for a second. He dropped the dream back in my spirit. So I grabbed my journal because I sleep with my journal on my bed and my Bible on my bed Um for reasons like this, yeah, I study late at night, but for reasons to where I know I'm a dreamer and I have to write them down or record them on my phone sometimes. This was an instance where I was prompted to write the dream down. So when I woke up, I wrote the dream. Um, and again, it was a dream about my ex-husband. And in the dream, I was there, but I was like a watchman. So I'm watching what's going on with him. I'm watching kind of like a behind the scenes view. And when I say watchman, I'm there, but it's like I'm really not there. I'm just watching. And I'm, I'm looking at what's going on. And um, yeah, I won't get into detail about that, but I write down the dream, right? And immediately the Lord wanted me to go into prayer for him. So I started praying for him based on the dream because I knew what the dream meant. Like the Lord was revealing to me what he was showing me in the dream. So I, I started praying for my ex-husband. Just went into heavy prayer for him. And um, I went into heavy prayer for him and his fiance. I prayed for the both of them. Holy Spirit just told me to say that part too. I was going to leave that out. But I went into prayer for both of them, um, heavy prayer. And after I finished praying, guys, the fire alarm in my apartment started blaring, right? I mean, so loud. Mind you, it's early in the morning. I'm not cooking anything. So there's no reason for the fire alarm in my apartment to be going off. It starts blaring. So I'm like, what in the world? I get up and I'm fanning the fire alarm, right? And it stops. So I'm like, maybe the community, because I live in an apartment complex, right? So if there's a fire in someone's apartment and that smoke goes out into the hallways, 
it will cause like the community fire alarm to go off, right? Like the fire alarm in the complex. So everybody will usually come out the door. That's happened one time since I've been here, but everybody will come out. It prompts us to get out of the apartment, like to tell us someone's apartment's on fire. So I open my apartment door. I'm like, maybe the community alarm is going off. Silence, guys. Nobody's alarm is going off, but my alarm. So I fan the alarm. It stopped. I go back into my room, still med- meditating, still talking to God. The alarm starts blaring again. Okay, this time it's not just the, the fire alarm in my living room. The one in my bedroom, or you guys can see the one behind me, in my hallway starts going off. But then I think there's also one in my bedroom, or somewhere else, but it, there's two alarms going off. I'm like, Lord, I know you're speaking. And he has me look at like the time on the clock, right? And the time is 521. And the Lord speaks to me a lot through numbers, through times, through different methods. So as I look at the 521, he reminds me of a dream that I had on May 21st, where in the dream, I was folding clothes on my bed and alarms start to blare like a clock alarm. And when I walked out in my dream, this was on May 21st, I looked at the clock on the stove. It was 1112, right? And he brings me back to that dream. Um, Now, on May 21st, when I had that dream, I knew it was an urgent dream. But again, we only prophesy in part. So I didn't know exactly what was happening, like what the alarm was for. But I knew that the Lord sounded an alarm in my dream for something is to say like something's happening, like I'm about to do something. So he brought me back to that dream. And again, in real life, guys, my fire alarm is going off in my apartment. So I knew God was speaking loudly, okay? And it was urgent. So the things that he was having me pray over for my ex-husband and his fiance, they were urgent prayers, right? They were urgent prayers. Um, And I knew it. Now, how urgent or what exactly the the urgency is or what he's doing, I don't know all of that. And a lot of the times we won't know all of that. I I don't know. I just know he prompted me to pray for my ex-husband and his fiance. I prayed for them. Fire alarms were going off in my apartment. So I knew the Lord was saying, this is urgent. This is something like something was going on in the spiritual realm or in the physical realm. I don't know. I didn't ask questions. But I say this to say, guys, when the Lord drops a a urgency in you, and I know I'm not the only one that gets this because he does it to a lot of people, you may get an urgency to pray for your mom who just cursed you out or your cousin who just called you every name but a child of God or your your ex-husband who treated you like the woman on Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Whatever your story is, when he drops an urgency in you to pray for someone, do it. Don't ask no questions. Don't, well, Lord, tell me what I'm praying. No, he will give you the words to speak out of your mouth and pray. He will give you instructions on how to pray, what to pray for. Just get up and start opening your mouth and pray for that person. And he will give you the words to say and to put into the atmosphere, okay? Whatever is released in heaven is released here on earth. Whatever is bound in heaven is bound here on earth. Flip flop that as well, okay? Like you have to do what he's telling you to do. When he gives you the urgency to get your butt up and it could be one, two, three, four, five in the morning, it does not matter the time. Get up and pray because your prayer could be saving someone's life and you don't even see it. We could only see what's in front of us. The Lord could see around the corner, around the block, up the street, years from now. He can see everything. So trust and believe he's giving you the urgency to pray for that person for a reason. It's not for you to call and be like, the Lord told me. Now he tells you to call the person, fine. But what I'm trying to say is it's not for you to be boastful and just to reach out to a person. The Lord told me to pray for you. So what's going on? Tell me that's none of your business. And don't like make sure that when you're praying for this person or these people or whoever he puts on your heart, that your heart is pure, that your heart is pure. Even within my prayer, I ask the Lord, even though I know he can see our hearts, like he he can tell if our hearts 
are filled with purity or if it's filled with evil or manipulation, he can see it all. But even in my prayer this morning, as I'm praying for my um, ex-husband and his fiance, I asked the Lord to, to look at my heart, to seek my heart, because I, I want him to know that my heart is pure, even though he knows it. Sometimes I still put it in prayer when I'm praying for people, especially when it's like a, a tricky situation when I'm praying for ex-husband, you know, he's engaged, he's, you know, trying to start his whole new life or whatever. So I still wanted him to search my heart because it's pure. It's pure. I didn't plan any of the events that happened to me this morning. The Lord gave me a dream. I woke up. He told me what the dream meant. I went into prayer for them. The fire alarm started going off. So I knew it was urgent. Pay attention to the signs. Because the Lord will give you signs and you'll know when something's um, when something's urgent. Like, don't just dust it off as, oh, that's just a coincidence. No, God works signs, wonders, and miracles. Okay, that's in the Bible. Like, he will give you signs of stuff and you'll be like, ooh, like this is urgent. Sometimes he'll tell me, even he'll give me dreams twice or tell me something in a dream twice. When he speaks twice, I know that's urgent. Like he's stamping, like stamping his name on it. Like I'm talking to you. So that's why it's important for us to develop a relationship with the Lord, an intimate relationship, because then you learn how the Lord speaks to you and you know when something's urgent, you know, when he's telling you something that requires your immediate attention because you have a relationship with him. So you know how he talks to you. I know he talks to me through dreams, numbers, um, Visions I do have, but it's rare for me. So when I do have a vision, like sometimes it'll like freak me out because I don't know I'm having a vision because that's not often how he speaks to me. But I do have visions. I have dreams a lot, like a lot. Like I can dream every other night or every night. Like I have dreams a lot, notebooks full of dreams that he's given me. He speaks to me with numbers a lot. But that doesn't mean that those are the only ways he's going to speak to me. That's just how I know he speaks to me for right now because I have a relationship with him. He can change the way he speaks to me and start speaking to me in a whole different way. He can increase my gifts and it changes. But I say this to say just develop a relationship with him so that you know the method that he uses to talk to you and to speak to you. But I just wanted to give that quick word, guys, because a lot of us are intercessors and a lot of you guys our intercessors. And you may not even know it. You may be like, I'm not an intercessor for anybody, but yet you can sit here and listen to my video and think of a time where you remember God gave you a little unction like to pray for somebody. Okay. All of us can be intercessors. All of us were called, we were set apart as prophets of the nation. So we all have gifts. Now, whether you tap into those gifts or not, that's up to you. You have free will. But a lot of you are called to be intercessors. And when he drops something on you, pray for that person. I don't care who it is. I don't care what they've done to you. I don't care how hurt you are from something that they've done. Give it to God. He is your vindicator. Let it go and pray for that person. God can tell me to pray for a person who literally just cut me off the road, cursed me out, whatever. I will still pray for that person because obedience, obedience, is better than sacrifice, okay? God loves an obedient child. And we are all his children. I don't care how old you are. We're all his children. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Scripture tells you this. You can be a giver all day long, give to the homeless, feed the homeless, do this, do that. But if you're not obedient, it it's a, it's a mute point. Be obedient to what he's telling you to do. Cover whoever he tells you to cover. And don't question it. He doesn't have to tell you everything. I don't know what's going on in my ex-husband's mentor or his fiance. I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know. I don't know. But I know my, my God said pray for him. Pray for her. Okay, Lord, I'm up. I'm going to pray for both of them because I'm obedient. Be obedient. Your blessings are on the other side of your obedience. So that's all I have to say, guys. Keep this video under 15 minutes because I be saying a quick word. My words don't be quick, but I just speak what the Lord gives me. So I hope you guys have an amazing Wednesday. Be blessed. Be obedient. Be you.
Be beautiful, guys. Have a blessed day. Love you. Bye.